So let's recall, just let's write it on the board, what I just said. Uh, so for abelian varieties, first you have uh, the, the, general, I mean, the general strategy is to say that finiteness in, okay, so this is not exactly the way I phrase it, but this is what I, I, I what was involved in towers of L isogenies in that state. Okay, so this is what if you take an uh, amine variety and you want to say that there are only five too many amine varieties which are isogenous by the power of L uh, to be a given amine varieties, and this gives you a different lecture. And then if you want to pass from, I and mean, if you want to prove this fineness, you have to bound the degree. So for an amine variety, there is a single degree. Uh, then this is done by times. Okay, so, 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 so this is really something where you see that a lot of it is uh, very field independent because uh, the kind of fineness in towers in blind states is a very general result. It's just that for lots of fields, it's completely false, of course. If you start with a variety over C, you will find infinity. The isogenic class is going to be infinite, uh, but over a fine field, no? Uh, and then, well, Zarin string is probably the general thing, and uh, the part is that Zarin string implies fineness, which is this uh, small thing about fine field. And again, I mean, if you think about Fabric's proof over number field, it's really goes the same way. It's just that that it should be nice fineness is much harder. Uh, okay, so I have to to so so for QC services, I have to do two things. So first, uh, find my statement. So what? So I need to explain in this setting. Uh, what I should replace uh, L isogenies uh, with in the case of key trees. So this is, uh, let's say, this is Lieblich, Lorik, Snowden, and so this, I mean, this is essentially what they did, but uh, a small violation of that. And then, what is that? And then how does it impact? Uh, okay, so so I start uh, by explaining the, the kind of fineness results that uh, we need. Okay, so recall uh, take so x k three now. So I, I want to explain the first step. So I will explain it uh, in a quite short way. But anyway, k okay, three over k finite. And then take for x. Oh, I, I want to no, I want to say something about this strategy. And, and, and there are two ways I, I told you before of explaining why uh, the take on issue for KC services is really the next step after I've been right. So, so the first thing that you can say is uh, because of Kuga stack. So that's what happened for the vague conjectures, vague for the vague conjecture for the varieties, and then the Kuga stack construction that I told you relates uh, h2 over k3 with h1 of n right. Okay, so that's one thing, right? There is another thing that you can, more geometric, that you can see here. <coughs> so let's imagine the take picture as a, so it is a finite statement of the power group, and let's imagine that in general the power group parameterizes something like you have a surface and you have specific coverings, maybe you have a vibration and it's torsion under this vibration, something like that. So it depends a little bit on the geometry, but this, so this idea of taking covers. So what happens when you take covers? You have two things that blow up. You have the degree of the polarization that, that gets multiplied by the degree of the cover or some degree of another section that gets, gets bigger and bigger. That's a, 
that pre prevents you to get final statement. And there is another thing, there is a topological thing that blows up as well, which is the, the, the canonical bundles. If the canonical, if you start with a K3 surface uh, with positive canonical bundle and you start taking some kind of covers, then the, the, the canonical bundle will also tend to, to get bigger and bigger, right? And so that's why in these two cases it's much easier, because when you take uh, isogenies of abelian varieties, maybe the degree gets bigger and bigger and you have to bounce that by Zarin street. But the topological situation doesn't change at all. You still get abelian varieties, so you still get uh, bounded topology for free. And that's exactly the same thing that will happen for K3 services. So this is a statement about inside the realm of uh, K3 services itself. If you start with a, with a surface of general type, and you start unwinding the statement that you get, then you will actually get uh, unbounded topological type as well. So, so, so that's another way of saying that. Kx equals zero is a significant. I mean, should be expected to be significantly easier. Okay, so take for x is the same as finiteness of uh, the torsion <coughs> of our group. So let's say uh, infinity. So of course, is, is this, uh, this is independent of L. L is different from capital. Okay, so so now uh, how do we? We start with classes of L to, of L to the N torsion in our group of X. How do we construct an interesting object? Well, we construct modularized twisted sheets. Okay, so I will be a little uh, fuzzy on the numerology here, but let's just explain the statement. So, basic idea. From Alpha in the power group, so a torsion, a torsion class, uh, L to the N torsion class uh, in the power group of X, uh, we can construct a moduli space, well, not one, so moduli spaces of alpha twisted. So, so the whole game, really, uh, of this hour is to replace playing with A and its dual with uh, A with X and its four Imukai partners, or twisted four Imukai partners, or modular species of sheep. So, what do you, so so what is what is this construction? So you so so what is an alpha twisted sheep? So if you have in general a, a projective bundle on a, on a variety, let's say just a projective bundle, the abstraction to writing it as the projective bundle twisted to a vector bundle lives in the power group. Okay, and so we can reverse that construction and construct the category of alpha of twisted cheese of alpha twisted cheese associated to our class, which parameterizes or at least for the smooth for the for the locally free objects uh, correspond to this project bundle with this specific construction, and then you can co uh, cook up a uh, category which is exactly the same as. So, yes, sir. you say I need so Brower, but Brower is a quotient of H2. Yes. And H2 is kind of bound, right? No. no, no, yes, but this is not, no, this is finiteness, not finite rank. Not finite, ah, finite. This is finiteness. Not finite. So you want this group, yeah, 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 so right. I mean, this group is only finite, but you want finiteness as you take the yes, union of the whole end. For x over k. Okay. For x over k, finite, of course, otherwise it's completely yeah. false. So, you know, if you will start x over c, then you have this QL model. Yeah. Right? So, so you want to say that it's okay. okay. So if you have alpha, you can consider moduli of alpha twisted cheese. And I won't do the numerology here because we will have some, uh, some uh, numerology later. But under, so, so we have, so, so I, I will come back to that. And Eyal explained a little bit yesterday the formalism of Mukai vectors. So you, you choose, if you want to consider a moduli space of cheese or twisted cheese, you choose a so-called Mukai vector, which corresponds to the term classes of the cheese that you consider. You can construct, um, you construct a moduli space of sheets, and another suitable assumption, again, that are not very important, but I start with alpha, we can construct such a moduli space of twisted sheets, which is itself a K3 surface. So again, I will come back to that, uh, I mean, in the untwisted case, so, so I'll be a little further here. But this is a general um, idea uh, I mean, uh, that originates with Mukai, that in general, if you start with a uh, stable sheet on a K3, you get 
uh, an obstructed deformation theory, so you get smooth moduli spaces, and these moduli spaces tend to be uh, more symmetrically related. So if you have if you have the right dimension, then you will actually get the KT surface. Uh, this is a so-called twisting form. Okay, and what interests me is, is, is that okay. So if you if you look at this, we understand the common so K three surface. Let's call it x alpha. So it depends on. I mean, you have to choose a Mukai vector here, but I, I'm not. I'm not uh, choosing. I, I'm not doing that anymore. So we construct another K three surface x alpha. So so here here is what we do. We start with x that might not satisfy the Tate conjecture. So we have uh, classes alpha of higher and higher um, order. And we can find all these x alpha, all these k three surfaces. And the fact that we can compute is that uh, the x alpha. So, the, so here is what I really. Need. So if x has degree two d, so we start with something of degree two d, then x alpha has. Okay, so it's not entirely clear if it has exactly a normal class of degree two d, but it has a line normal. Of uh, L with L square equals 2D times, well, times the uh, order of L. So I think L to the 2 L. Okay, so we take, so, so the twisted for a part is something like an L to the N isogeneous, so it multiplies the degree of line by L to the 2 L. <coughs> okay, so we get something like this, so this is this will be very useful. And the second thing is that the discriminant, so, so I don't, I'm sorry. L is L is. I take a class of L to the n torsion. So this is the order of the bra of the bra class. Two n x n, so it's the square of the order. I think it's the square of the order. Yes. So I mean that's you know when you take covers you multiply the and the discriminant of the neuron cell group of x alpha. So I really want to say well it has a line number of high degree but of course. Uh, this is not very important. I mean, this is not. This is. Uh, this doesn't say that the x alpha are all different. The, the discriminant of the neuron cell of x alpha. So we have a surface. We have the neuron cell group, and we have an intersection form on this surface. And the discriminant is something like. So there are. I mean, there are coactive factors, but this is essentially L to the two n times the discriminant of and that's all right. So it's not exactly L to the 2 n. You have an uh, index which depends on the, the special Mukai vectors that you chose. But the point is that, so, so the point is that two things happen. So, so why, why am I writing this? So first, uh, there are infinity many such x alpha. x alpha if the power group of x, the L final part is infinite. Well, just because the discriminant of the neuron cell group, oh, I'm sorry, over everything, the when I say neuron cell group, so the uh, Okay, so there are infinite given things because the discriminant gets blown up, and uh, nothing happens, so the thing, and nothing happens like this. So this will be more later. So as I said, I mean, this is a technical remark I mean, that you have to use. But as I said, the, the point of this is to give an analytic proof. I don't want to do any PLD theory. And what I just want to say is that the discriminant, the, the, this is just something about L coverings. The, if P is a characteristic, you have no, no factor of P that's come up here. You have nothing that goes on, which would be a bad OK, so, so now, if <laughs> no, it's not the covering. No, it's a twisted for a Mukai partner, but I'm just. Okay. I mean, it plays the role of covering. It, it plays the role of an isogen. That's just what I thought. Uh, okay, so if this family is, if, uh, this family is finite, x, the take on it. Okay, so. If you have a counterexample to take a measure, then you get infinity many K3 surfaces of degree 2d to the L, 2d times L to the 2n. Okay. So that's just what happens. So now what I will do is explain that 
Well, there are only finitely many such gateway surfaces. So the point here is that maybe the degree has grown up. So if I fix the degree, of course, I can have only finitely many gateway of k. But you can actually bring back, bring down the degree. Okay. So this is essentially what Lieberman uh, can say. Okay. So now I have to. So now what I want to do is explain that in space. So so what the, the theorem will be that if we look at the sets of k surfaces over k with these conditions, then this set is finite. Okay, which is not obvious because of the reason bound. Okay, so, so now we do a little geometry. So of course I will have to do it over finite fields, but what I will I mean this is geometry that works over finite fields. So can you remind how you go from that to the tate? So t is the same as finiteness of this. Yes, yes, yes. If this is infinite, I construct x alpha. Yes, 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 yes. And then infinitely uh, many x alphas. Many, and then and, and then what I will prove now is there are only finitely many such yeah. K3, so, so the discriminant cannot go to infinity. Ah, okay, so here you play this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, exactly this exactly tells you that there are infinitely many yes. of these x alphas because of this equality, yes, exactly. and I will prove on the other hand that there are only finitely many such x alphas. Uh, but such, what do you mean by such? Are, so, so there are only finitely many, so I think D, there are only finitely many K3 surfaces of degree 2D times L to D2L. So it's, I mean, it's, uh, for all n. I'm sorry? For all n. For all n. Well, actually, it will be only for all n and not for all something fixed, and then I choose L, but I mean, the point is that you can go up to infinity. So that's why I didn't write the precise statement, because the precise statement is a little bit uh, Okay. Uh, okay, so, so let's explain that in straight for case. So then I have to go back a little bit and explain what, uh, I mean, go back to what Aya explained. So when n grows, uh, it still remains a finite number? Yes. Because you ha actually you have a polarization of high degree, but you also have another polarization which just turns out to be low degree. So you have to find it. So of course we're not going to find it directly on X. We're going to find it on a UI space of object on X, and then we'll go back to find it. Okay. So I'm going to explain uh, what uh, the, just uh, re recall what uh, what we what they did yesterday. So we start. Okay. So now K inside of K bar, uh, you know, is a field <coughs> X over K K three. So at some point, but this will be later on, and this is not a very important assumption, just to have cleaner result, maybe finite or k or k equals k bar. So at some point it's nice to have the power group of k not to be complicated, just for simplicity of state. But you so, so this is something very general. Okay, so let's start with the uh, x k3 over k. Uh, then we have the nuclei lattice that was introduced yesterday, so I don't remember. Uh, the of yesterday, but look like that. So, so since we are over an arbitrary field, we look at the Arabic look like lattice, which is just so H tilde of x k bar z l. This is by definition this is H zero of x k bar z l plus H two plus I'm sorry uh, zero. So I think I want to consider one. So then I twist everything so that I remain in weight zero and H4 x k bar. So yeah, of, two, so of course, if we were over C, we would even have a usual Mukai lattice with Z coefficient, but we cannot really do that. Uh, and inside, well, inside the Mukai lattice, we have n of x inside is the algebraic part. So again, the Mukai lattice doesn't have uh, the structure of Z module, it's just Z L module, but the algebraic class has. So the N of X is just Z plus the neuron survey group of X K bar plus, uh, let's say Z omega. Maybe, uh, let me just put it just. Okay? So omega is a final of the class in H4. So this is the algebraic part of the Mukai lattice. And now, well, if we, if F is a sheath, on x, then we define, that was defined yesterday, the Mukai vector of f. This is just the trunk class, the trunk character of f times rho plus the class of x. So this is what you want to, to get Riemann wrong. So in other words, let's write it uh, concretely. This is the rank of f plus c1 of f. And I think you get, I won't get confused, but this is chi of f minus the rank of f. Times okay, this is a Mukai vector of a sheath. And the reason you use that 
the reason you want this normalization is that you get, you know, uh, if I have two she's and chi of SG, which is by definition the alternate sum of the xi's, uh, this is v of f minus v of f. V of g. Oh, and maybe I should. <laughs> so as a lattice, this is h2 plus the hyperbolic thing as a lattice. Okay, so I put the quadratic form on the Mukai lattice by saying that h0 and h4, which are both of them are one-dimensional, are isotropic. It's a pair of one. Okay, so this is gonna. Don't you want to replace f by f4? I'm sorry? Maybe f should be replaced by f2. Oh, uh, no, it's a notation. It's, uh, I think it's fine. I think it's the same. It's the definition of chi. Oh, in the definition, it's fine? Yeah, it should put no, it's okay. Definition. I think here it's okay. Is that fine? Oh, oh I think the second one. Oh, here I'm going to put that. Here? Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah. no, no. Okay, so, <laughs> what I, so, so now I will do a story, so, so yeah, I recall a little bit uh, the story of modulus space of Shivan KH3 synthesis, so fix H, an ample class, uh, V, a Mukai vector. And then you have mh on v. This is a moduli space of stable sheaves uh, with vector. Okay, so of course, if I want to, to be reasonable here, I need to put a few assumptions on z so that well, for this is not empty. So so let me so so I want to do that with my characteristics. So usually. Let me just mention that for the experts. Usually you would fix V, and then you would take H generic with respect to V. Uh, this doesn't seem, I mean, I wasn't entirely convinced that this works in characteristic P, so I would put very strong assumptions so that some instability for V and, and stability coincide. Uh, okay, so let's let's uh, write once and for all the condition on, on V, and then I will promptly forget about it. So I want the modulus not to be empty, so I will assume that the rank of V is positive, uh, let's assume that V square is positive, so this is the same distribution as yesterday, this means that the moduli space is not a K3 surface. Uh, I want C1, um, I'm sorry, I want V to be primitive, of course. And then I would put a strong condition which is stronger than uh, HV in V generic. I want to say that if I write V to be the rank of V plus C1 plus lambda, I want the GCD of the rank of V of, of H intersection product of H and C1 and of lambda to be 1. Okay, so this is usual, again, this is not the condition that you would use in general, but this is a condition that guarantees that some instability and stability for the coincide. So this is, so, okay, so under these conditions, and so I would not repeat this condition, and, uh, but I will just, I mean, when you prove things, you have to, to check that everything uh, works out. So with this condition, you have a very nice moduli space. So, you, so, so let's summarize exactly what we know about the moduli space MH of V under this condition of H. So let me just summarize. Uh, it could be a very long theorem that has been proved by a lot of people. So probably, so of course, Mukai, uh, O'Grady, and Yoshioka, I think at least. So maybe, I mean, you know, maybe I'm forgetting some people. So at least this one, I just want to summarize the structure of the moduli space of Shiva. Uh, with some kind of Okay, so let's go. So, so recall the only thing that you have to be careful is that I want to work, of course, so the end goal is to work over a fine field, so I have to, to, to check that everything carries on to characteristic P. But this is not a bad thing, right? So everything, we know a lot of things about this over C, and K3 services, they lift over C. So now, we know, we also know that moduli spaces of stable sheaves work very well in a positive characteristic or mid-characteristic by general work of Langer. So the way you, uh, you analyze the structure of an of V is just lift your K3 to characteristic zero, construct together with a Mukai vector, which is possible, construct the Mukai space over C, and then reduce mod P, and then you have the analysis. So it's not that. 
So you have to be a little bit careful, but it's not good. Okay, so NH of V is not empty. So this is, I mean, this seems like a, a basic thing, but of course this is absolutely, I mean, this is absolutely crucial to, to check that NH of V is not empty. I think this is due to a gradient, and this is not trivial, right? So, so you have this uses uh, Torelli theorem for K3s, you deform to mu first blue elliptic K3s, where the homogeneous space of shield is actually a modification of a Hilbert scheme, and then you deform, you get something on it. So of course this is very important because in the end, if you think about it, we are to trying to do the take on lecture, we are trying to construct some geometric object somewhere, so we have to start somewhere. This is the part, the non-trivial construction part. Uh, okay. So this is non-empty, this, this is smooth and projective, so the fact that it's projective is is uh, well, the semi stable, the modulus of semi stable is not for projective, semi stable is not for the same. It's smooth by work of Nukai. Uh, its dimension is, two, is always even, and it's v squared plus 2. Uh, okay, it's a uh, deformation equivalent uh, to the Hilbert scheme. Okay, and it's simple. Okay, so, so I'm not saying that it's a irreducible homomorphic simplex manifold because I'm working over an arbitrary field and I'm not really sure what the homomorphic simplex manifold for the refinite field really is, but it's, it, it admits a symplectic form that is given by, uh, by the trace of the external product of quadrats. So all of this, so the non emptiness is due to a gradient, the rest is due to Mukai. Oh, the deformation equivalent? Oh, no, yeah, this is due to. I, I think it's false from Obrey or Yoshenka. I'm only slightly confused about of what is due to Obrey and Yoshenka. Uh, I think it's already. Oh, uh, no, deformation to, to interesting. But it depends if C1 is creative or not. I think Yoshenka is already finished. So, yeah. Anyway. But, uh, but uh, you need to worry about the technique. Working with a finite field or about what? And deformation equivalence. No, because I mean deformation equivalent, I mean if you need to calculate the theory deform themselves in the reduce and deformation no, no. I mean the space is I mean if it's with a generic fiber it's connected. it's connected that special uh, anyway, okay, so so if k equals c then uh, mh should be is a uh, linear reducible for the symplectic manifold, so it's simply connected to the addition, it's essentially what it says. Okay, so, uh, third thing, so I'm saying very basic thing, but I have to state them because, because we are on characteristic P, so there exists. Yes? No, sorry. So, so the super single also has smooth lip things? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so you, you, so this, this theorem of the meaning tells you that you get K3 surfaces lift to characteristic zero. Oh, yeah. All the time. That's a general thing. And you can actually even lift a few line bundles. So I think up to nine, I think, uh, half the dimension. But supposing, the, supposing I cannot lift the whole Picard group. That's the difference. But you can lift, you can, I mean, you just have to lift one, two line bundles. You have to lift H and the Mukai and C1 of V. But that's, there is a lot of space in one You don't have a canonical lift. Okay. Uh, equals it's a, it's a instrument model of the manifold, and there exists a canonical uh, quadratic form. So again, I have to say it because uh, in characteristic P, well, we have to say it. Uh, Q, uh, the bogey bogomer form. So this is the right place to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to, to define the form uh, such that, so I, again, I, I mean, I'm in this series, I have to characterize it one way or another. So you have uh, two n factorial, q of alpha, and that's one way of almost fixing it, n factorial, then alpha. Q. So I'm just putting Fuji constant here. So that's one way of, def of, well, this is not exactly defining q, but it's almost defining q. Uh, on h2 of uh, of uh, n h of v k bar z. Okay, so we have uh, this. So this is again this is this is uh, easy uh, from the, the complex case because uh, m h of v lifts smoothly to characteristic zero because if x is smoothly to characteristic zero, so we just descend. So this is only the count or the count? No, n h two. Because this formula is valid on h two. 
Okay? And so that's the point, right? So you have to be a little bit careful about the Picard. So, so, so as, as uh, you mentioned, the, the Picard group does not leave Picard at 6 0, so it's a little trickier to, to, to descend things on the Picard. So, um, Q on, so, so this is a uh, Z vector space, so on uh, the Neron Sede group of MH of B. So this is a Z lattice, but I, a priori, I only know that Q takes value. in Z1 Okay, so there is some, and because you cannot lift all the vectors at once, so you have some kind of trick. So of course, everything outside of P is taken care of by the fact that the form exists on cohomology, but at P it's kind of trickier. So it doesn't matter. That's why earlier when I stated the, the twisted result, I said that nothing ever happened at P, so that's why this does not happen. Okay, so now the cohomology of the, of the moduli space of of, um, oh, see. So, okay, so here we, see, this was explained by the uh, last time, so I have to do just write the Arabic version. So, let's look at the orthogonal of V, the Arabic orthogonal of V, so this is inside H tilde of X K bar. So there, inside the Mukai lattice, the Arabic Mukai lattice, this max as a multiple by something that we can call theta V L to H2 of MH. So maybe I, I will, from now on, I will write mk bar to this mh of v, then l. So the del of one, this is weighted. Okay, so again, this is a consequence of the result of the value in Yoshioka, just by the smooth switch and clear. Theorem. And here is the last two things. I'm sorry I have a very long thing, and I actually will have to relate it very soon, but I just want to convince you that the general theory works as apart from some p's, worked uh, very well. So here is what you have. So, so you have the orthogonal. So this is inside the algebraic part. So this is the z lattice. We have uh, this max by some phi that lead to the neuron sevre group of m over k bar. So this is the actually, I'm sorry, what? I don't understand the notation. So OK, so I have two things, right? I have. In cohomology, but in cohomology everything is a lattice. So I have an isomorphism, the Fourier Mukai kind of isomorphism. This is just V perp and the sec. Yes, this is V perp and the sec and x. But we have one which is a Z module and one which is a ZL module. That's why I have two different notations. Then we have H2 of MK bar ZL1. And here we have C1, and we have the two chunk classes map, so the diagram for use, of course. And, okay, so this is an isomorphism. A priori, it's not entirely clear that this is an isomorphism either because we, we don't know so much. So, so the only thing that you know is that theta v is uh, the, so the Cocker North. So, well, you have two things. Theta v is injective. It's an isometry. So this is general result. And the Cocker North theta v is uh, finite. Of P primary form. So let me just explain this. So of course, theta v, if you if you know this is given by an algebraic correspondence. This is given by the by the Fourier Mukai transform by the universal sheaf by some. So so for, you have two things you have to be a little bit careful about. One thing is that you might have denominators, so that you clear using cohomology essentially. And uh, the other thing is that it's not entirely clear that uh, this is an isomorphism as well. So you might have some p-torsion in, in characteristic. That's not too bad. OK, so this is a general, so, so what, what is the reason I, I spent uh, so much time explaining this is that I, so, so you have this general theory of uh, moduli spaces of, of stable sheets on a key surface, which works very well. We get an apomorphic symbolic manifold with a cohomology that we understand very well. And uh, it works in characteristic p if you put some feed uh, at some place. Okay, I, I don't understand something. You, know, you take V perp and then you intersect intersect with the neon survey of the K plane. Yeah. No, no, N of X is the algebraic part of the Mukai lattice. Okay. okay. And the thing is that algebraic elements are sent to the neon survey group yes. because it's an algebraic correspondence. And then you have to be a little bit careful about you don't exactly get all the and you get some P torsion. I mean, this is really, yeah. <laughs> OK, 
okay, so here is what I want, he said. So there are two things that help us. The, the, the two things are that controlling the neuron cellular group of M gives us control over the neuron cellular group of X, because it gives us control over the orthogonal inside M of X, so it gives us back control on the discriminant uh, of X. So the corollary the discriminant of the neuron cellular group of X K bar. This is some power of P, so we have some power of P, but we times lambda times the discriminant of NS of M K bar of the middle space with zero where well, lambda is positive and it's at small z squared. Okay, so if we bound, so, so here is, so I'm, I'm going to, to, to prove some Zion's trick. So I will prove that, that I will bound the m's, I will not bound the k3's, I will say that there are only m in the m can take only time to many values up to, up to some, some transformations. So I will bound the, discri so the, the discriminant of the neuron cell group of m, and I say that if I bound the discriminant of the neuron cell group of m, I bound the discriminant of the neuron cell group of x. Just because, well, Bounding the discriminant of the neuron cellular group of X is the same as bounding N of X, the discriminant of N of X, because this is neuron cellular group plus a uh, hyperbolic plane, and the, ortho the discriminant of the orthogonal is related to this one. So we have a. Yes? You're going to look at that which curve is to work 1, or 0. Sorry? You're going to look at that which curve is to work 1, or 0. That's right? You're going to look at uh, V squared? <coughs> v squared for. No, 1. I will just bound it. I will just have a bound that depends on the degree of the case that's, that I start with. I just want not to, it to be bound. No, I don't have a, a neat thing as in Zion 2, but it's principally polarized. It's just a bound and a strike bound. Okay? And you could really express it. Um, so that's one thing. And you have uh, something with the discriminant might blow up at P because of all the P torsion that we had, but as I said in the application, nothing happened at P, so this is not a problem. Okay, so this is one thing. And the other thing is here, right? So, so when we work, we start with x, right? So on x, we have the only uh, thing that we can start with is the angle class, which has degree, which has some degree that we cannot do a lot about it. But here, we have a larger lattice, which ha we have a larger algebraic lattice because we get, oh, we get, we we added in a hyperbolic plane and we we took off one dimension, so we g gained one negative dimension, and this is what helps us decrease the degrees of line mapping. So let's just work out an example. So what is the easiest example of many space of stable sheets is Hilbert scheme. So M equals X to the N, and then by computation of Boville, we know that H2 of M is just H2 of X plus Z times delta. So delta is a, is a half of the exception of the of the exception divisor. So we have delta squared equals minus two N minus the part. Um, okay, so this is a cohomology of x. Oh, maybe uh, yes, of course, it's different where you put the two. Uh, anyway, um, so you get this, which is of course a special case of uh, the formula on the right. And then, okay, so inside of this, so inside of this, we have an algebraic part which at least contains two uh, D plus z delta, right? It contains this algebraic lattice because we have on x we have uh, a number class of degree 2d and then we have delta. And of course, here we are in, the, in much better position to find a, a line bundle of low self intersection just by taking a combination there because we have the negative direction. We can increase the So of course, if you if you just work this, you get a, 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 some kind of Pelfermat equation, which is uh, which is what it is. It's not entirely good at. Uh, but it, but this is exactly the, the kind of freedom that we get. So by passing to the Hilbert scheme, we it, the angle comb gets bigger. We get one x had a negative dimension, and so we can decrease the degree of line model. If x has a, a, a line model of a very large self intersection, then here we can find line model. So I'm not saying anything right now, but of positive but lower self intersection. That's the key to that. That's the key to bounding the geometry. Okay. So, so, so let's just uh, put this observation. Can is it more than one? So it's cluster size. Oh, well, then you, you just have it show x, right? So it's itself. So the, the point, 
So then what happens if you have a cash reserve? No, but if you take any whole one, you just not do anything, right? Yeah, but you have W. There are plenty W squared equal to 1, yes. No, 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 but because this formula holds only if n is bigger than 1. Oh, yes, of course. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so v squared is positive, but the Mukai vector, of course. Uh, so the Mukai vector is always uh, positive. The square of Mukai vector is also. Anyway. Uh, okay. So, so let's just put this observation into, into, into a, a precise criteria, which is. Also a little bit technical. So the way you, you so what do you want to do in this? You have the neuron cell group of M and and you want to show so the first step, and I will explain why this is sufficient. We want to find a, a class here of low self-intersection with with respect to the Bovil Bogomolov form. So that's the first step. Then I will say how it bounds the journey. Uh, so we need to find two things, we need to find V and we need to find this line bound. Uh, v and this line bundle, they form a uh, lattice, uh, which is positive definite, and has, uh, we, they form a positive definite lattice. And we need, what we need to do, we need to find, to bound, we need for this positive lattice, definite lattice to be bounded, to be to have bounded discriminant, because we need to bound the geometry of M, so we need to go bound both, well, the square of V, because this is dimension of M, and we need to bound the degree of the line bundle. So the goal is given is to find a low degree, low discriminant, positive definite lambda inside uh, what n of x, which is just the name of the of x plus u, and which actually contains, I will only work with you know, 2 plus u. And we need to find such a low degree thing independently of D, or at least as independently of D as we need. So this means that if we vary the degree of the K3, then we still have a Mukai uh, space of slow dimension with a line bundle of a low self-intersection. So, okay, so, so this is a geometric theory. You want to say how, whether you want to ask whether this contains uh, small positive definite lattices, and well, the, the criterion that you get if you just open uh, Nicolino's work. So this is slightly annoying, but this is exactly what gives you the isogenesis. So let me just uh, write something. But this is around three, three, no, I want positive definite. Yeah. What? No, I mean, of course. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you just have to do your work. I don't think you can find something independent of D. You just take some congruent condition. So anyway, let's let's write one criterion. I mean, you didn't really try to make it efficient. So here's a proposition that is I mean, this is almost an exercise. So fix D. So we fix D and we consider multiple of D. The K of the green multiple of D. Uh, fix lambda inside lambda 2D. So inside, let's say, 2D plus U, uh, positive value. So I fix one, and then I, I want to say that I can still embed lambda into all uh, the 2D type something, so okay. Uh, okay, so then there exists, uh, what do I need? N, I need three congruence relations, I think. Such that, okay, so this is really cumbersome, but just to tell you that this is not a bad condition, such that if M in is an integer, such that, okay, so I need, let's say, M congruent to one dot N, and AB quadratic residues. So this is a this is that series we need to talk about at some point. Uh, then there exists a primitive embedding. Oh, uh, lambda inside to the M plus. Three. Okay, so, so it's not really important to focus on the exact condition on M. Just, let's just notice that it's a very weak condition. And then what I'm saying is that if I, that you can find, in the, well, what is the degree here? So this, is, this corresponds to the neuron cell of the K3 of degree 2dm. Then we can find a low dimensional modal phase of shield on the K3 with a low degree line bound. Okay, so which contains the basis of lambda? I'm sorry? 
This is a two-dimensional. So this is this contains like the two orthogonal elements. One will be the Mukai vector, and one. A and B. What are we appealing to? Oh no, you just they don't appear in the conclusion. But if you want to fix lambda, and they depend on lambda. You want to embed lambda into a family of, of rank three lattices, and there is a congruent condition to be able to do that. The congruent condition of n. If n is n, so there is a and b depending on lambda, so that if a is a quadratic residue of m, then you can embed lambda inside. Okay. And this is just a quadratic condition. It's a condition. They, they are used to express a condition of n. Yes, yes, it's a condition of n. a and b are quadratic residue of m. This is, a, this is a condition of n. Okay, so anyway, so the precise, I mean, this is not point of optimal anything, this is just saying that. Here I take m to be a power uh, something of l to the n, like I had in my twisted things, and I can just do that. Okay, so uh, geometrically. But you're saying there is no kind of lattice which positive lattice to rank two which contains an open. I don't I may I did, I'm not sure. It yeah, seems a little it's, strong. It's possible. I, I mean, I didn't check that it's not possible, but I'm a little bit like skeptical. It seems a little yeah. too, too, I mean, rank 4 probably would be nice, but rank 3, I think there's some space that is missing. Okay, so geometrically, let's try it geometrically. So under the same condition on, on M, so X of degree to the M, then there exists, so, so first, there exist two things, there exist n and r, two constants, so that if x is any k3 of degree to the n, with n satisfying, uh, satisfying, let's satisfy the condition star, so this is star, there exists a moduli space of stable sheaves. M on X and L inside P of M such that the dimension of M is bounded to its N, like first constant, and uh, L so L to the the top self intersection to so L to the two N, okay, this is two N, this is R. Okay, so there are two absolute constants that appear on the spaces of sheaves of uh, this unbounded family of k surfaces. Okay? So this is something that you really want to think of as a restraint. That means you tell you that if you have any variety of any random degree, you can find a principal polarization on a cross equal to force. If, here, if you have any k surface of, so not exactly random degree, but degree to the m with some condition n, then you can find a modular space of sheaves with fixed dimension and a fixed uh, positive, but low degree and normal. Okay, so this is the same thing. Okay, so let's. So this is a geometric statement. Where is n? Is n is the dimension of the moduli space of sheets. Oh, n. So n and r. So you, how do you get n and r? So n, you, you fi found this uh, fixed positive definite lattice. You take an orthogonal family, just two, which so are. V would be a, a, v would fixed, be a, fixed, uh, a fixed element of lambda. lambda. And then the uh, something in the orthogonal. Is, Okay, <coughs> so claim the family of such n is directionally bounded. So, so this is where we pass to a real boundedness statement. To so the claim of proposition of something. So the, the set of so I fix n and r, I look at the set of these modules, these varieties m, which dimension 2 n and uh, and uh, line bundle of degree r, I think that this lives in a bounded in the limited family. And so of course uh, the key point is that well here I just have a numerical condition on L, but this of course is certainly is not an ample, I mean it doesn't have to be an ample thing, but the key part is that is a theorem of Hoegrecht. That tells you that L or L dual is big. So this is a key thing, right? So so let's first so 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 let's first explain that over C. 
So over C, we have a high risk positive. So well, the first thing is we have the positivity criterion for K3 surfaces. A K3 surface, a K of K3 surface, is a projective variety if and only if it has a line bundle of square of uh, positive square. Okay, so this is well known. And how much positive pro projectivity criterion tells you that if we have the hyperkeller manifold, which might not be a project, which might not be algebraic, if it has a line bundle of positive surface intersection, then it is actually algebraic. But there is another way to phrase that, right? Because we know a lot about the deformations of M, so we can so so we know that the M is a uh, is that right now we deform it a little bit so that it, it has pi r rank 1. And if it is projecting with pi r rank 1, this means that L, after a small deformation, has to become ample. And then, you know, the limit of ample thing is big. So we get lots, so that's the key geometric part where we, we have a numerical statement, we produce lots of sections. So now you are a little bit, so, so, so I think it's late, so maybe I, I won't do all the details of it, but this is enough to give you bidirectional boundedness. So, so here is how you do it. You apply Matsuzaka Mumford uh, theorem that tells you that if I, I, I require L to be ample, then of course this family is bounded. Because the canonical bundle is trivial, so if, if to bound the family by Matsuzaka Mumford, I only have to bound it to the degree of that, the separate section of that. So that's one thing. Now we work with this, this uh, the polarized family. We apply a little bit of uh, Hilbert Mumford regularity of an. Um, Casanova for regularity, and it tells you that up to replacing L by some power, some uniform power, L itself actually, under these two conditions, L induces a directional embedding of M inside projective space. And then you, you just, yeah, that's essentially what you do. So you, you just have to convince yourself that the degrees and the dimension are bounded, which is true. Okay, so this is a directionally bounded family. So again, this is, so, so the core of the prime. The, well, the core, right? Is that over a finite field? Then, so this is something that well, I mean, we never pass to uh, to an extension. This is really given by L itself. So corollary, if K is finite, then the set of such M is finite. Well, maybe up to bidirectional improvement. Okay, so this is exactly like when we said, well, the set of uh, abelian varieties of its dimension principally with a transfer polarization, or well, finally it's fine. This is the same argument. And the corollary prime. So this is not good enough right now. So so now let's let's see what we, we need. We need to bound the X. We need to go back to the case surfaces themselves. And well, the first thing is that uh, M, we, we don't, I mean, well, Yal talked about that, but there's a set of directional equivalent classes of such M, it's, uh, it's not uh, completely easy to control, especially in characteristic P, we don't have this, well, I don't think we know how to do that, but the corollary, the corollary is that the set of neuron safety groups of M, for such M again, is fine. Well, why is that? Because two, these are varieties with trivial canonical bundles, so if they are bidirectional, they are now considered group are the same, because they are bidirectional in dimension 2. So, of course, I mean, this is well known in characteristic 0, and this works in characteristic P, because it's something about the resolution of similarity of surfaces. Which we know. So, the set of neuron safety groups of N is finite. The yeah, it's good dimension 2. Because the form is the same. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just to check that two, uh, these two things are the same. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, anyway, this is really not a problem. Yeah, the problem. Anyway, so the corollary is that the set of neuron safety group of X is finite. Well, what is it? Finite. Finite. Yeah, finite. 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 So now, okay, so how do, you, do I see that? Well, I said that the discriminant of the neuron safety group of X is bounded in terms of the discriminant of the neuron safety group of N and the, well, the, the square of the nuclear vector, so the dimension or whatever. So this discriminant of neuron safety group of X is bounded, so the, then the, the set of lattices with fixed discriminant with fixed dimension is bounded, is finite, so we get this. So we bounded the discriminant of all these possible uh, K3 surfaces X. So there is a slight thing that we don't exactly know what happened at key, so you need a condition on the p valuation of the discriminant here. I'm not moving, but this, as I said in the application to take one, it's okay. Okay, and then now 
we use uh, the, the, the general results of the structure of the angle cone, and we know that if that if we fix the lattice, if we fix the neural cell lattice, fixing the lattice and as Gives the bound of the degree. Because, you, well, you, of course, you cannot read out the ample classes just in the lattice, but you can read out the degrees of the ample classes on a, on a K3 just by the lattice itself. That's the general uh, theory of, of uh, the ample point of the K3. So we bound in the degree and then. Uh, Okay, so that's that's the principle. Okay, so I think. Questions, comments.